more to the story that should be told. Those are the words of Jane Philpott, the widely respected former president of the Treasury Board, the former Minister of Health, the former Minister of Indigenous Services. And she said those in a radioactive interview she gave to McLean's magazine, which has reignited the whole SNC-Lavalin controversy. Philpott resigned alongside Jody Wilson-Raybould because she claims there was an open attempt at political interference. Now, in a week where the government delivered a budget with $22 billion of new spending, Phil Potts' demands for the Prime Minister give a waiver to speak more fully about this controversy has shaken the Liberal caucus. Then Jody Wilson-Raybould wrote a letter to the Justice Committee saying she wants to provide more evidence, texts and emails that she claims will bolster her view that she was improperly pressured when she was the Attorney General. So given all this, will the Liberals simply let these two powerful women speak? Should they be kicked out of caucus? What should happen? Let's find out. Joining me now is the Minister of Tourism, Official Languages and the Francophonie, Melanie Jolie. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Let's start with Jane Philpott's words. Um, she said very explicitly um, to McLean's Magazine, there's much more to this story that should be told. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's pretty well respected. Why doesn't you, well, how does your party in the wake of that justify not bringing these two women back to the Justice Committee, shutting it down? Well, first of all, if we look at the issue that is at stake right now, Evan, the issue is whether there was inappropriate pressure uh, on, the, on the Attorney General to make sure to protect the 9,000 jobs at the SNC Lavalin. Mrs. Philpott was not part of these discussions and that was clearly discussed actually before the Justice Committee in Mr. Butt's testimony. Now we've waived client, uh, solicitor client privilege. We've also waived uh, the fact that cabinet confidence. It's the first time in Canada's history that we've waived that. The Minister of Justice and the former Attorney General also uh, went before committee, talked for four hours and a half and now if Mrs. Philpott wants to go and tell more, she can go before the House of Commons and clearly uh, she can speak because the privilege of uh, parliamentary uh, procedures actually applies okay. to There's her. There's a lot in there, Minister. Let me just stay with Jane Philpott. She was asked that question. Mm -hmm. Because you, you, your government keeps saying, go speak. She says this, I'll read her line. If nothing wrong took place, then why don't we waive privilege on the whole issue and let those who have something to say on it speak their minds and share their stories? Both Jane Philpott and Jody wilson Rabel say there's more to say that Canadians have not, they don't know the full story. Why don't you just waive privilege if there's nothing there and let them speak? Well, we've... Waive privilege for, for no, the for attorney the whole, general for the whole period. But actually, you want to make sure uh, if they want to speak, actually, and they can clearly speak, they can use their own parliamentary privilege to go before parliament. But they say they and can't, speak. though. To be fair, she, but, you're a lawyer, but so is Jody Wilson Raybould. But she, Mrs. Raybould also said today that she wants to send more of text and emails that she got. Yes. So sh it shows that basically she has confidence in the fact that uh, she can she she can speak and that that we can give her the opportunity to speak. Well, and on, therefore, okay, she is asking the Justice Committee to look into this issue, as she, uh, she, and she sent a letter regarding that. And then it's up to the Justice Committee to take that decision. But M Minister, let's talk about that. Jody wilson is gonna send uh, written evidence, which she says texts and messages that will bolster her claim. But she's sending them to the Justice Committee that has shut her out from speaking again. How will that evidence get examined? How will the Justice Committee question her on it? Who will test that evidence? It seems to me once she does that, your liberal controlled committee then is obliged to call her back. Would you support that? This is a, a new letter that she has sent. Obviously, they will take that into account and they will make their own oh, so they study could, of so it. They could it's up to the, them to decide. But you, the you, other you, mean they also have, Evan, is that they can go just before Parliament and they can speak. Nothing precludes the fact that they can speak. They have a different, they have a different they view on They are parliamentarians, that. and as parliamentarians, as you know, we can just speak in the House, and that protects all, us of okay. many affirmations, but, but again, as you may know, of uh, uh, regarding anything we can say. It's true that they can, although they believe it's not enough and I would trust a former Attorney General on that. She believes she needs another waiver. And two, it's very hard to get a spot, like a standing order gives them one minute uh, to do it. They need more time. But let me get at something else that you said. You talked about 9,000 jobs for SNC-Lavalin, something that your government has quoted a lot. 
Where did you get that figure? Because this week, the CEO of SNC-Lavalin, Mr. Bruce, came out and said, I never said that 9,000 jobs were at stake. I never said that we were going to move the headquarters. Your government kept saying that. Where did you get that figure from if the president of SNC-Lavalin said it's a bogus figure? Well, I'll tell you my point of view. I'm the member for parliament for Hanse Cartierville. And many of the people that work at SNC-Lavalin uh, SNC live in Hanse Cartierville. And they've come to me to do something about it because they were preoccupied at losing their jobs. And many of their families also have been very preoccupied to see maybe their husband and wives losing their jobs. Where'd you get this the, is where'd not you just get the a concept, SMC this is real life people, real people losing potentially their job. But and the, so obviously CEO as a government, we always that, want to make sure to protect jobs. We've done it in NAFTA. We've done it in many, many uh, uh, contexts. We've even bought a pipeline to make sure that we we could protect jobs in the West. Jane Philpott says the story is untold. So does Jordy Wilson-Rabel. There's more to say. But they did this two days after the budget. Do you, if there was a vote in caucus to keep these two women in, in caucus, two women who have now questioned the very integrity of the cabinet, would you vote to keep them in or would you vote to kick them out? Well, this is a question that caucus will have to answer. But let me tell you something. Politics is a team sport. And in a team, not everybody agree. Sometimes some want to do this or that. But at the end of the day, what's the most important is team spirit. Okay. And if they decide not to want to play in a team, it's up to them to decide. Do you think these two women are lying about feeling pressure? Do you think they're lying about saying that there was an attempt to politically interfere? They have resigned their jobs, cabinet jobs that you have because of this. If you, are they telling the truth in your mind or not? I won't speculate on their motivation. Being a cabinet minister is a tough job. Every day we feel pressure. Every day we feel pressure from our constituents, from people from all around the country, uh, from cabinet colleagues or caucus colleagues that want you to decide in a one given way. But at the end of the day, we decide. And it's up to us to decide how we feel about the decisions we make. To be fair, maybe for you that's the truth, but for an attorney general it's a different case. It's not about whether you feel. She says it's not about how I feel, it's about the principle of the independence of the judicial system. The attorney general is a different person. You know that it's a different role. And the question now is, are you satisfied that the principle of independent justice has not been violated? Jane Philpott's not, Jody Wilson-Raybould's not. I think not. we've had a lot of evidence that shows that yeah. basically this pressure was appropriate. What clearly the former Minister of Justice and former Attorney General said, nothing illegal was done. And that's what Canadians need to remember. Nothing illegal was done in this issue. All right, I don't know, is that, that's the bar. Okay, that's the new bar for Sunnyways. I appreciate this, uh, Melanie Jolie. Thank you very much. Pleasure.